All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, it's uh, maybe a little early for some, but we think that this is a, a really important exercise and appreciate you uh, joining us. So to the mayor's point, um, we, we do appreciate uh, you uh, keeping yourself on mute if you're not talking. We are going to be going through just a very brief presentation on this, uh, this process, and then we are going to spend the bulk of the time doing some fun interactive voting and having discussions about it. As we're going through the slides, as we're going through the voting questions, if you do have questions or comments, uh, please use the chat function, and that's circled there on your screen. Uh, if you don't see it on your your uh, your screen, you can hover your mouse down uh, towards the bottom of your screen, and you will see it come up and just click on chat. Kate Green from Alchemy is going to be monitoring the chat, and so uh, we will absolutely get to any question or comments you have uh, as we move as we move through the presentation. <clears throat> I apologize if my voice is a little hoarse. Uh, I was at a Birmingham Legion soccer game last night. We are, I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and we are fairly blessed to have the uh, ability to see sports in person, at least um, a, few, a few sports. I mean, we're at 30% capacity and more hand sanitizer than you've ever seen in your life. But that is why I'm a little hoarse because we won four nothing. It was a great game. Uh, I am Alex Perlstein. I'm the vice principal of economic development for Alchemy, and Libby Crimmings is uh, also a vice principal at Alchemy, and she will be taking you through the the voting uh, portion of the morning, which we'll be using a software that we will explain to you when we get to that point. <clears throat> Just very briefly, we like to kind of put these processes into context. Uh, we are planning for Stephen's point, but of course, uh, issues and, and trends that are happening at the national level affect uh, the type of opportunities and challenges you face. You know, certainly COVID has thrown a wrench in just about everything as it relates to uh, the workforce, the economy. We're starting to see some trends that uh, are coming into focus and experts are thinking about what this might mean after we have uh, made it through the pandemic. You're starting to see uh, a tremendous amount of telework. I think upwards of 50% of plus of uh, the US workforce has teleworked during this period and a lot of people think that it will continue um, after uh, people are able to go back to the office. That notion of these den the dense cities, whether it's on the coasts or Chicago or, or other cities where it's harder to social distance, where it's harder to uh, maintain public safety, people are a little bit more leery of, of those types of environments. So you're seeing more ways to kind of de-densify the city. You've seen lots of firms and even uh, national chains that have declared bankruptcy. So uh, the thought is that there is going to be some more, some consolidation in, law in, in large firms, which might, uh, might lead to some job loss, uh, as will um, increasing automation. It, it's certainly a trend that had um, been gaining momentum before the pandemic, but now it's really an overdrive as businesses are, are thinking about how can we remain open and operational, even though our employees might not be able to come into the office. So these are our pretty significant trends, some of which may, may affect our, our structural economy. The thought is that there will potentially be some negative consequences for, for low wage workers as jobs are either eliminated or automated. Um, not everyone is able to telework. Uh, you know, if you're a customer facing uh, employee, it's it's going to be difficult for you to be able to do that. So um, there are potentially some consequences, but also some opportunities uh, potentially for some government intervention that can help alleviate these costs of automation and and you know maybe provide some additional opportunities for folks. We also think that smaller and rural communities really stand to benefit from some of these trends, especially the telework 
phenomenon where people are realizing that they can be productive and work from, uh, you know, just about anywhere that has uh, a, a powerful enough internet connection. And so the quality of life of small communities like Stevens Point and the cost of living might become very compelling if people are tired of paying uh, $2,500 for a studio apartment in San Francisco or New York. They are starting to, uh, you know, survey some of these workers that have been working from home teleworking. And really the consensus is that people are liking it. Uh, they are productive, in some cases more productive than they were previously. And people, uh, workers who have this option, uh, really are going to start thinking about uh, telework being a, a criteria for where they might want to work in the businesses that um, they might want to work for. This is a, a quote from a couple months ago in the New York Times, a professor in at Columbia. There's so much talk about the pandemic and sort of where we um, end up at, on the other side of this. And I think anyone who, who says they know is probably either lying or delusional. Uh, we really don't know what the post-COVID future will look like, but um, it, it gives us that potential to, to dream, to vision, to think about what we, what we want to happen and how to make it happen, given the realities, given the constraints of the moment. So, you know, we hope that this will uh, serve as, as sort of a theme of this process, not only this morning, but, but um, this, this strategic process that we're really, um, you know, hoping that you dream big, that you push the envelope, that you really think about what can be transformational in Stevens Point. Very briefly going to talk a, a little bit about us. We are Alchemy Community Transformations. We are a team of uh, McClure, which is a, an engineering, engineering firm in Des Moines, Iowa, but we really focus on places, on people, on place making, uh, communities that people want to be in, understanding that talent really drives economic development in this economy. And so uh, if you're not competitive for talent, it's going to be hard for you to retain, attract, and grow uh, the best jobs that you can. Uh, we really think that it's not necessarily about the dollars. Funding is important for, especially if, if uh, you have some very aspirational uh, projects and programs that you want to implement. But we think the dollars are out there. It may take um, uh, finding different sources. We're not saying that it's all going to happen overnight. But we really we think what ultimately drives uh, community success is the leadership that um, really uh, understands and appreciates the community's vision and helps um, you know bring the community along as you're making some tough decisions on the road to accomplishing um, these goals. Oops, hit the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Uh, we are working with. Uh, we are fortunate uh, to be working. Can you all still still see my screen? Can everyone still see my screen? Because I've kind of lost my, my Zoom interface. I will assume that you can because no one's saying anything. We, no, I we, can't see. We not. cannot. Ah. Nope. Then let me do it this way. I think I gave up my screen control, so I apologize for that. While I'm there we go. while I'm fumbling around getting this back, is is Greg Wright on the on the call this morning? Yes, yes. I'm here. Okay, Greg. <laughs> uh, I thought that you might want to say a couple words about Create and the work that you all do. Sure thing. Uh, so yeah, so uh, Create Portage County has been in the community now. Uh, we started as the Arts Alliance in 2004. Uh, we have grown into more of a creativity focused community development organization over the past couple of years, uh, doing projects like the Idea Center, uh, like the Levin Amp Music Series, uh, and other support for municipalities in the area trying to improve workforce attraction and quality of life. And so we are also on this project helping out, um, trying to make sure that we really connect Alchemy to what's unique about our community and uh, the, the various individual perspectives about how people see this community growing in the future. Yeah, and uh, Greg has been 
uh, instrumental and very helpful in, in the process of determining who uh, we are going to talk to in interviews and, and giving us that local context has been has been very uh, important and helpful for us. This is the project team, our principal Zach Manheimer, uh, Libby, myself, Kate, and Greg. Uh, very briefly, I'm gonna go just over the strategic process. We think that uh, you know, a real advantage for Stevens Point is that you are initiating this process from a position of strength. There are some communities where their process would, would lead them to a place where um, they have some of the assets and amenities that Stevens Point already has. So we think that this enables you to think even bigger, to dream even bigger about what might be aspirational, but, but still very much attainable. Uh, the process really begins with this uh, input component where in addition to the vis visioning sessions, there is a survey available uh, on the city's website that we'll talk a little bit more about in a, in a couple minutes. Uh, we're doing individual interviews, focus groups. We've worked with a core team of local leaders who have helped us put together a, a great steering committee of public and private leaders from constituencies across the community that are helping us sort of coordinate this process and providing us with that local perspective. In addition to ensuring that we're talking to uh, the folks we need to and the groups we need to, to ensure that this is a uh, representative, inclusive, and uh, diverse process. That, pro uh, that qualitative information is going to combine with quantitative data that we're also doing some research on to really kind of paint the picture of how Stevens Point competes for jobs and talent what your uh, key challenges and opportunities are, and then that will uh, lead right into the strategic plan where we're gonna identify what those priorities are that you can work to implement in the coming years. And that will be the last phase, is uh, that implementation plan, now that we have sort of set the vision, what does that mean in terms of resources that it will take to implement? Who's going to lead certain efforts? Who's going to support certain efforts? Uh, what is the phasing of, of actions in terms of when they're going to launch? How are we going to uh, demonstrate success? What, what does success look like in terms of, uh, of metrics and measurements? And then how are we going to track our progress as uh, we work to get to that point? Um, well, that is sort of the overview, and I'm now going to hand it back over to Libby, who is going to start the fun part of the meeting. All right. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Libby Crimmings. I'm the Vice Principal Community Placemaker at Alchemy Community Transformations. I'm based in tropical sunny Des Moines, Iowa, just down the road a piece from you guys. So I cannot wait to uh, have this travel ban listed, lifted so I can come up and visit Stevens Point and fill my car with all the delicious food and beverages that Wisconsin has to offer. I miss you. All right, let's jump into the fun part here. So we are going to, I might, uh, Alex, you might have to make me the host so I can screen share. Uh, so we are going to use um, a software called Polling Everywhere. And this will allow everybody to answer questions in real time as we ask them. And we can see the, the results live as we go. Um, so if you have a cell phone with you, or you can do this on another browser on your computer. Um, if you're on your cell phone, there's two different ways you can participate via text or on the browser on your cell phone. And don't worry if you have um, a flip phone, it works just as well. Um, maybe even if you have a, what do they call those things? The jitterbugs. As long as you can text, you should be able to, to participate. Um, so I still have I'm, Yeah, I'm going to have to get Ryan to make you the co-host because I'm not sure I know how to do that, unfortunately. Ryan, are you still there? You, you don't get to do a co-host. It's, it's you have to turn over absolute power. Pass me I'm the power, please. So um, if, there, if you go to the upper right-hand corner of her image, you will see a, a blue box with three dots. There should be an option there to make host. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> so I got 30 years of IT experience, so. <laughs> All yeah. right. You can tell that no one trusts me to be the host. That's why I don't know how to do this. All right, look at that. Okay, I think it worked. Okay, 
Let me go into my screen here. Okay, I see that okay? Yes, awesome. Okay, so here's the instructions. To participate by phone, again, you have two ways you can participate. You can do it via text. Uh, so you're gonna text, the phone number is essentially that 22333, and then send a text message with the words Libby C171, and you'll get a response like you see over here on my right side that says, congratulations, you've joined the party. Uh, or the other option is you can do it on the browser, uh, and the browser will work whether it's on your phone or on your desktop. It's very easy if you're on your phone. You're gonna just enter Libby C171, and then it will take you immediately into our session. If you're having any issues, please speak up now. You can also ask questions in the chat and our amazing colleague, Kate, will be happy to help get everybody up and running. I'm just gonna pause for a second, make sure everybody's in. I believe Kate also dropped that link into the chat conversation. So you can also possibly just click on that. So basically the way this is gonna work is we're gonna ask a question. If you're participating via text, you just answer the question by texting the corresponding letter. So A, B, C, or, or whatever it is um, to submit your response. If you're using a browser, you're just gonna click on the buttons as we go, very easy. Um, as we're making sure everybody is up and running, just a few ground rules um, to the visioning process. Uh, first of all, since we're doing this online and because you don't have to set up an account, so we don't have, um, the responses on the screen will not be associated with your name. So first of all, that gives the opportunity to be honest, um, but we also ask, of course, that everybody is respectful. And if there's any um, profanity or hurtful or offensive language, you will be booted from the visioning session and you will not get to stay for all the fun. So be warned watching you. All right, uh, of course, uh, be thoughtful in your answers. Um, we want this to be productive um, and sometimes you only get a few answers to a question. So make sure you think through, uh, you know, what are your top priorities that you'd like to see. And again, continue to mute yourself if you are not speaking. You're welcome to, to jump in and ask questions if we need to, but we're gonna save the majority of the conversation once we get through all the questions. Um, and then at the end, we'll do Q&A if we have other questions about the process. Um, and then the last big thing that's really important about visioning sessions is when we're asking for ideas of what you'd like to see in your community, the number one rule is money is not money is not involved in this conversation. So it doesn't matter how expensive something is, money is not on the table today. So if you really wanna see Disney World in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, throw it out there, let's talk about it. When we get to the uh, you know capacity assessment part, we might have to run the numbers and see if it'll work. But for today, everything is on the table, no matter what you wanna see. Okay, those are the ground rules. Again, if you have questions along the way, drop them in the chat. Any last call for issues before we get started? Awesome. All right, let's jump in. So a couple uh, quick and easy ones here to get started as a warm up. What's your age? If you're like me, you have to run some numbers in your head and think about it for a minute. Once there was an entire year where I thought I was a year older than I actually was. So my birthday was great. It was a surprise. I turned younger. Wasn't it Jack Benny who was perpetually 39? I know I'm aging myself, but. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Benjamin Button, I'm not sure. All right. Do and yes, it was. A little bit more time here. There we go. And you can't change your answers either, so. Honesty is the best policy. All right, last call. Libby? Yes. I dialed in over the phone and how do you, where do you enter the Libby C? Obviously entering that into just the browser is not going to bring up anything um, to correspond with this. 
Yes, if you're on your phone, you can put your put this call on speaker. You should be able to still hear us. And then you can open a browser on your phone and then up, uh, oh, you're just calling in. So the, the link you're gonna go to is poll, P-O-L-L, ev.com slash Libby, L-I-B-B-Y, C. Can you get that over? Huh? Can you get that over again? P-O-L-L. Yep. P-O-L-L-E-V. Is this Joe? The, the person on the phone. I couldn't. I, I don't see a name. I just see the phone number, the 1710. Uh, Not yeah. Joe. It is Joe. Okay, hang on. What I'm going to do, because that's your cell phone number, I should be able to send you a picture of the link. Uh, will that work? And then you can copy it in? Yep. Or just text the link. That'd be helpful. Thank you. Give me just a second to do that. So while you're doing that, I think we're going to keep moving and then um, we can we can go back and, and add in answers if that's helpful later, okay? Well, I just lost the phone number. I think they may have disconnected. Um, it should be, is it at the top of the screen here? But I don't see it anymore. Do you? Uh, it's showing up on mine. Okay, just read it off to me quick, please. So the phone number, if you're doing it via text, is no, 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 no. Sorry, I, uh, Joe's phone number. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Joe's I can't connected. see. I can't see Joe's number anymore either. Yeah, I think I have his cell phone number in here anyway. Stand by. Uh, continue on. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to hold everybody up. No, that's okay. I want to make sure we get everybody up and running here. That's a good good opportunity to meet my daughter. The other thing about work from home is that sometimes you get visitors. So this is Everly. Say hello to Stevens Point. Hi. We're doing some visioning this morning. Okay. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> you can tell how excited she is to participate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we continue? Yes, okay. continue. I'm, I'm going to get in touch with Joe offline. Okay. All right, next one is our warm up questions. Again, uh, you're going to text in the corresponding letter. So, A, female, male, B, prefer to self describe C, prefer not to answer D. All right, last call. Should be pretty easy. All right, now, now that we've warmed up and we understand how the software works, um, I thought we could just really dive right into probably the most controversial questions. Um, really just start off, you know, with the toughest ones first, and then we can, you know, do the easier ones later. So first question, very, very serious, local food wars. Who has the best soft serve ice cream? Oh, wow, that was fast. This is not actually a part of the visioning session. This is just so that I know where to go when I come to town. I need to know. Wow, very close. I guess I'll have to go to both. Okay, now most of the questions uh, in the survey are going to be between these two options. So one, you'll see the bar graph like this, and then the graph will change according to the answers as we go. Uh, the other option is going to be open-ended 
um, questions. So what you'll see next. Um, so again, these are just for fun as we learn uh, and get started here. But the next one is also critical to my visitor list. So please tell me where I can go get the best local cheese curds. So this one, if you're texting, you can just text in uh, the, the name of the restaurant. Uh, it's an open-ended response. So again, this is a practice round. Two harps or nothing. All right. And then we'll see the answers as they come in. It is also interesting for us to be able to compare the responses from this morning. And we had a visioning session yesterday from five to six. So we can tell if there's any difference between the afternoon and the morning visioners. Like preference of local cheese curds. Although we're seeing a lot of the same yep. favorites. Well, now I'm really hungry. Okay, so I think we're all up and running, uh, warmed up a little bit. We all understand how to use the, the software. Awesome, let's jump into the real questions. Not that this isn't helpful for me. Okay, uh, so first question, how long have you lived in Stevens Point, Portage County? A, under five years, B, five to 10, C, over 10 years, or I don't live in Stevens Point, Portage County, which is okay, you can be honest. Maybe you work in town. Your opinions are also valid. We need to hear from you. Give it a little bit of time here. I really gotta figure out how to do background music. So I don't just talk the whole time. You could hum a few bars. Da, 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 da. Yeah, really. <laughs> Girl from Ipanema. <laughs> Maybe Alexa can play elevator music for me. All right, last call. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what's your home zip code? So this will show up a little bit differently um, since most people probably have the same zip code. Uh, the more people that enter, the bigger the, the number will get because this is in a word cloud fashion. So you just text in your word, your zip code or enter it in the box in your browser. All right. Some of these we can move fairly quickly. Last call. Okay, now here's the fun part. All right, tell me what's unique about Stevens Point. You get up to three answers. Um, you can text in uh, a, a word or a phrase, um, but when you're thinking about your community, um, what currently are the unique assets that you can find in Stevens Point? And try to think beyond just um, friendly people, town square, good schools, things like that. Those are all awesome selling points if you're trying to recruit me to move to your town. But what are really truly unique features? What are things that I can find in Stevens Point that I can't find anywhere else? What might you put on the billboard? Right. that people driving by might see and want to pull off and go to into Stevens Point. Or I live in Madison and my job is remote now via the interwebs and I'm sick of paying rent in Madison and I'm looking for somewhere else to move to. What's going to attract me to be interested in Stevens Point? Amazing parks, not just parks, awesome. All the parks. I see lots of creative, vibrant economy, arts and culture. Arts and culture meets wonderful water. Ooh, that is a good slogan, I like it, okay. Lots of recreation, breweries, yes please. Green Circle Trail. 
you get up to three answers for this question. So we're just going to give you a little bit more time. Fun fact, your Alexa can play elevator music. I just asked her. Apparently there is such a thing. I don't know if you can hear my smooth jazz. All right, give it another minute here. We've gotten a suggestion for the Jeopardy theme. Ooh. But Grover Washington Jr. is pretty good, so. Can you actually hear it? Faintly. Faintly, okay. Well, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> All right, last call. What's unique? Anything, tell me. Great craft beer. I'm into it. The dog and run. Okay. Let's keep moving. So if you're texting something, finish it up. Okay, moving on. Next question. Prior to COVID-19, if anybody can remember back that far, I think it was 10 years ago, what do you think was the greatest challenge facing Stevens Point? You're thinking about the future and where we wanna go, and what are some of the roadblocks and challenges that are in the way? Again, you get up to three answers. broadband, housing, diversity, infrastructure, maintenance, finding talent year -round, positions. Year-round economy that in between the college seasons. See lots of housing, retaining talent. 
Hmm, I wonder if retaining talent is related to housing. Give it another minute here. Okay, it looks like <clears throat> answers have stopped rolling in. So last call, if you're working on something, please send it in. Okay, and we're gonna move on to the next question. This is a great list, thank you for being honest. We have to address our challenges if we're gonna move forward, right? Okay, next question. What's missing from Stephen's point? So when you think about um, other places that you've traveled and been to, uh, what have you seen that you were inspired or excited about uh, that you think this could work really well in our community? What do you currently drive other places to go do or see? Um, what are the major pieces that you think are missing that you would like to see in this community? It could be anything. And again, you get up to three responses. And if people type the same things, then again, the word cloud style, the word will get bigger. Things. <laughs> And you can be specific if, if there is a particular type of housing that you think is missing or a particular, um, you know, type of, of establishment or restaurant. Right. And if you're worried about, if you type something that's more than one word and you're worried about it getting all jumbled, on the back end, we can see the full message of, of what you typed. So don't, don't worry if it looks all strange on the screen. Look at this, good job. What's missing? What would you like to see in your community? You can play background music for you. All right, we'll give it a little bit more time here. Fill it up the screen. Good job. You know, when we do visioning sessions in person, I have to write everything on a board. So this is great. Much easier for me. Better than my handwriting too. Okay, last call. Okay, excellent list. And don't worry if you had other things, we have more slides. Uh, we're gonna get a little bit more specific in some of these categories, so you can jump in to those as well. I'm gonna hit the next one now. Awesome, great job. Okay, overall, how would you rate the quality of life in Stevens Point currently? A is high, B is good, but could be better. C is okay or neutral. 
D is needs improvement, or E is low. Again, if I'm looking to move out of Madison and I can do my job remotely, I'm going to look for a community that has a high quality of life. So if we don't think the quality of life is super high right now, or it's good, or it could be improved, these are conversations we need to have so we can understand what would help improve the overall quality of life. Looks like we've answered this one pretty quickly. I'm going to keep moving. All right, next one. So for th if we're thinking about um, improving the overall quality of life, what specifically would you like to see to improve the overall quality of life? What do you think would raise that level up for you? Great list, keep going. All right, great list, keep going. We'll give it a, a, about 30 more seconds here. Okay, last call. If you are texting something, please submit it. And just a, a plug for the online survey, if you haven't taken it, uh, that's also will be an opportunity to add additional perspective and specifics in terms of some of these questions. So if there's a couple things that you wanted to say, but you weren't able to get it into um, the slides and this visioning, we do invite you to take the online survey and we've just posted the link in the chat. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Great list. All right, so thinking about downtown now specifically. So we started thinking about the community as a whole. Now let's focus in on the downtown area. What's missing or needs improvement specifically to downtown? Uh, housing, family friendly activities and places, dining options, arts and cultural amenities, parks and green spaces, bikes, pedestrian trails and routes, parking, non-student focused entertainment options or other. Uh, and you can submit up to three times. You can text it all in one if there's a space in between the letters or three separate times. 
And then if you have an other category, we'll have a, an opportunity in a moment to share what that is. These are just some general categories as a starting point to think about. Okay, last call. <clears throat> last call, please. Keep moving. All right. So these are broad categories. And now let's get specific. What specifically would you like to see downtown? And again, I believe you get up to three answers. So when you think about the downtown space, what are your top three votes for things you would like to see? Again, don't worry about the logistics and the specifics or money. What do we need or want? All right, last call. Okay, excellent list, thank you. And let's go to the next slide. All right, so let's talk about housing. Have you or someone you know personally struggled to find appropriate housing in Stevens Point? Yes, A, no, B, C, not sure. Appropriate housing basically just means the correct kind of housing that that person is looking for. So it could be a variety of price points, styles, options, location. Just give this a few more seconds. This one's pretty straightforward. All right. Seems like it's overwhelmingly yes. All right. Excellent. Now, when we're still thinking about housing, let's get specific. So what do you think are the greatest challenges uh, regarding housing in Stevens Point? Um, again, you can have up to three answers. This is open-ended. Um, what are the challenges? Are, are there not enough options? Are they not affordable? Are there not enough rentals? Are there do we have blight issues? Do we have multifamily housing, limited options? Are all the rentals super old and outdated and not updated? 
Is there a price point that's missing? Seems like most people have some sort of direct um, experience. So what were the feedback pieces of those people that couldn't find what they were looking for? Again, you can be very specific here, or you can um, kind of talk about a, a more broad category. Up to three answers, please. Great list, keep going. I forgot to mention when I was going over the process that the final deliverable for the strategic plan will be a website and it will be accessible to the community. So all the information from the research phase of the process will be uh, found on that website in addition to the final strategic plan. So this will be a living document that you can access and will um, continue to be a resource even after the process is completed. Okay, last call please. All right, excellent list. Okay, in a word or short phrase, what would you like Stevens Point to be known for in the future? So again, we're thinking about our community, uh, where we are now, where we wanna be. Um, when somebody says Stevens Point, where do you want them, what do you want them to think of? They say, oh yeah, that place that has whatever, or aren't they known for this? Or I remember hearing about them, I was there once. What do you want to be known for? I believe you get one answer here, so choose wisely. Okay, last call. Okay. I think we all get one response, so I think it looks like maybe we've stopped. Awesome, okay. All right, so that concludes um, our 
visioning uh, feedback section. Um, again, if you have not already taken the public survey, I would encourage you to do so. Um, there is a little bit of overlap in some of the questions, but for the most part, there's quite a bit of other questions uh, that you can also dive into. Uh, if there's anything that was burning that you didn't get a chance to um, give feedback on today, you can also do it on the visioning uh, survey. We've had, I believe, almost a thousand responses uh, from Stevens Point, which is excellent, strong showing. Um, so please encourage your friends and neighbors. Um, if you have anybody specifically that you think we definitely need to hear from, reach out to your friends and say, hey, this is really important to the future of our community and your voice is, is uh, an important part of this process. So the link is here on the screen. I believe it's also in the uh, chat so that you can uh, grab it there as well. And this is really a great way to ensure that this process is inclusive of every voice in Stevens Point. Uh, it's completely anonymous, but you do have the opportunity to identify um, by race, ethnicity, gender, etc. And we're, we'll be able to uh, calculate the responses by those different groups. So we'll be able to get perspectives of how different constituencies in Stevens Point view cha challenges and opportunities. So again, we encourage you to take it and recommend it to everyone who you think would like to participate because this really will um, serve as uh, information that we can point to and really say that this was a, a community driven process. Mm -hmm. um and I'd also like to say that we are available anytime. Uh, our, I'll, you can reach us uh, via email or phone. Our, our contact information is on our site, which we'll show you here in a second. And then please uh, also feel free to reach out to Greg Wright with CREATE um, locally. And um, he's a great resource as well. We're always happy to look for feedback. So at this point, I'd like to um, pause and be able to answer any questions. If anybody has questions about um, the process, um, the, the final results, um, the um, visioning sessions, the surveys, anything. Um, this is a time to answer questions. I'm not sure if Kate has any questions that have been in the chat so far. Uh, one question is the closing date for the survey. How long do people have to take that? Great question. And it'll be, it'll be open through August, so the end of August. Thank you. And you can only take it once, unfortunately. <laughs> it's not Chicago politics. You only get one vote. All right, if you have questions, you're welcome to uh, unmute and ask them live or um, drop them in the chat. Last call, don't be scared. Oh, we've got one uh, popping up in the chat here. Okay. Um, let me, uh, I said that before I actually read it, so just give me a second. <laughs> okay. I'll just read it uh, as written. What prior experience can you point to that did not gentrify the community you were advising, but actually strengthened the resources for poor and working people. Uh, usually decision makers own properties and or businesses, and although surveys are open to everyone, poor and working people usually don't see their vision come to life. So this just speaks, I think, to the broader equity of uh, kind of the imp input that we're getting and that we're sourcing. Well, I, I've been with Alchemy for a year. Uh, Libby has been with the firm a lot longer. I would say that um, I, I'm trying to think of a community that we worked in where uh, that was a challenge. A, a lot of the communities that we work in are, you know, experiencing disinvestment and depopulation. Uh, but I would say that, first of all, it's, it's a challenge that I don't know. I'm, you know, identifying a city of any size across the country that, that has effectively been able to uh, fully address these challenges, I don't know that you could find one. They're, they're, um, 
there are tools available. And I think as we go through this process and talk about what those opportunities are, uh, you, especially when you see so much uh, concern over affordable housing and you saw some uh, comments related to we need more density and we need more developments. And so you always have to balance that with what are the, gonna be the impacts on the community. Uh, not only in terms of affordability, but in terms of land use, traffic congestion, et cetera. So that's part of the discussion that, that we'll have when we're talking about opportunity is also what, what the impacts are and if there's any way to mitigate that. And there are some policy tools um, that communities have implemented to try to uh, stop or at least try to manage those processes. So um, I know that that is gonna be part of our process moving forward is, is when we're talking about projects, programs, opportunities, we are absolutely gonna, gonna consider what that means in terms of impacts and, and try to ensure that those, those impacts are not, uh, not uh, destructive to the community or any, any particular population. Yeah, I would just um, add that another piece of the equity um, puzzle here is also the uh, focus groups and interviews. So in addition to the public survey, which is very, very, very important. So if you think that there's any populations uh, of people that their voices are not being heard, this is an excellent chance to make sure uh, and send, send the survey out and encourage people to respond and to be honest and to be thoughtful um, uh, as a part of the process. Um, but in addition to that, in addition to our research, um, we'll be hosting um, quite a lot of focus groups around specific topics. Um, and then we will also be doing lots of one-on-one -on -one interviews um, with uh, stakeholders, with um, leaders in the community, uh, and, and not just you know typical who's who city leadership and things like that, but leadership of lots of different populations uh, and, and people that would be influential into this process. So again, if you have ideas and thoughts on, on how we make sure that we're being equitable, uh, please make sure to submit that so that we can uh, follow up and then I would just also like to say the, the last piece that no matter what community we've worked in, uh, a priority of almost every single community is making sure that we're creating uh, you know, places and spaces for people, for all people. And I've worked with you know, quite a few communities that they feel there are um, strong divides in the community or there are silos of this place is for this people and this place is for this people. And um, a lot of and and a lot of the priorities are focused on how do we create places and spaces where everybody feels that they are a member, that they are included, they are a part of the process. Um, Multi-generational uh, is another important piece as well. Um, and so that's usually a, a very strong focal point um, in almost every community that we've worked in. And I see a couple uh, questions that have come through the chat and we'll, we'll uh, answer uh, as many as we can and being respective of your time. Uh, there was a reference to how does this strategic plan differ from a study that was done about a year ago, a group from Madison. Uh, I'm not familiar uh, with that study. I will tell you that this is the first strategic plan that the city of Stevens Point has ever done. Uh, it is not a comprehensive plan, which is more of a uh, a government document that informs policy and spending decisions. Uh, this strategic plan will inform the uh, ongoing development of that comprehensive plan, uh, but I'm not uh, specifically familiar with, with that process a year ago. Uh, there was a question from Beth Gardner related to local leaders of businesses and religious organizations, and yes, we have sent this link and really engaged uh, every organization that uh, we are aware of to advise them of, of the survey and to distribute it to their membership. Uh, Greg Wright has been very helpful as well as the other members of our core team to identify those, those groups that we can engage uh, related to the survey. Uh, see a question in terms of participants for focus groups selected and invited. Uh, that's another area where we have worked very closely with uh, Ryan and his team at the city and uh, Melissa Johnson is on our core team, Jeff Schuler and Greg have, we've taken um, weeks 
to determine who are the right people that we need to talk to and to ensure that we have we hear all the voices that we need to to inform this process. So uh, it's been an ongoing discussion uh, related to um, us sort of deferring to you all, uh, knowing this community so much better than, than we do and ensuring that, that we are talking to uh, the groups and individuals we need to to ensure this process is really inclusive. I just wanted to point out, if you go to the City of Stevens Point um, Facebook page, they have um, a link to the survey as well as this beautiful graphic that you can share onto the social interwebs. So that uh, might help as well when you're pushing it out. Okay, uh, again, being respectful of everybody's time. If there's any other questions, pop them in. Um, you can also, this is our website here at the bottom, alchemycommunities.com. You are also welcome to reach out to us uh, directly. Our contact info is on um, the website. So please feel free if you have other thoughts or questions, uh, as well as Greg Wright with um, Create. Is there anything else in the chat? I can't see it. Uh, not that I can see. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you again for your participation. And we look forward to coming to Stevens Point as soon as we can uh, and uh, hearing from you again. Have a great day. Thank you again for participating.